Now, if you're like me, you can't help but be concerned about your bees sitting outdoors all winter long. Let's face it, it's going to be a cold winter no matter what. El Nino, no El Nino. Winters are cold up north, and sometimes our bees just don't do well in cold climates. So let's talk about that today. I want to talk specifically about some things like a screen bottom board or a solid bottom board, a hot box, you know what a hot box is? Hot box on top of your hive, a quilt box. Should you wrap it? You know, what are, the, what are the repercussions of too much moisture in your hive and how do you get rid of that moisture? Hey everybody, David Burns, EAS Certified Master Beekeeper. Good to be with you today. Thanks for joining me on my channel today. Let's jump right into it. What in the world is all this talk about winter moisture in a hive? Is it good or is it unhealthy for a hive? Let me tell you right off the top, very unhealthy for a colony to have a lot of moisture in their hive in the wintertime. Now they need some moisture because they are raising some brood but they don't need the amount of moisture that usually happens in northern climates. And why that happens is because the colony is warm on the inside, very cold on the outside. Those contrasting temperature forms condensation on the inside, the warm side uh, of the heat on the inside of the hive. So your bees, your colony is likely to develop frost or ice, water that freezes inside your hive. I've done studies on this. It freezes on the bottom of your inner cover or the bottom of your top cover. And then it, on a warmer day, when it gets above freezing in the wintertime, that water, even from the heat of the colony, will cause it to, that ice to melt inside your hive and drip down on your bees. Cold, dripping ice water down on your bees. And let's face it, if you don't take care of this, it, if you're lucky enough that it doesn't kill your bees, you're gonna have a lot of moldy comb coming out of winter. I used to spend so many years struggling with moisture inside my hive. I would just cry. Sometimes it would kill my colonies because they would just get too cold with cold dripping water on them. And then sometimes the comb was just so moldy on the, on the surface of the comb coming out of winter that it was frustrating. And I began to really look into all these things that we're gonna talk about today Basically, I'm gonna save you a lot of headache trying to figure this out. I mean, take it from somebody that's been keeping bees in the winter <laughs> in the north for over 25 years. Just, you know, why do all this work yourself? Let me just tell you the ups and downs about it, okay? First of all, you're gonna have moisture if you live in the north in a cold climate uh, where there is that constant cold weather beating against your hive. And I'm talking about temperatures that are below 35, below freezing. Uh, if you have significant days where temperatures are below freezing, you're likely to have a moisture problem in your hive. And so that's what I experienced many years ago and I work, went to work to solve it. And one of the things that I discovered was I tried many methods. I, just, I tried the hot box, I tried the quilt box, I tried all of these ways of getting moisture out of my hive and it was unsuccessful. Now, I'm perplexed about the hot box. I don't know why it's called a hot box. I don't think there's any heat up there. There shouldn't be any heat in the hot box because if there's heat in the hot box, that means heat that was in your colony has escaped the colony that needs that heat and now it's in a hot box above the colony. I don't think that, I don't know why it's called a hot box. I'd rather call it a cold box. <laughs> but anyway, um, I guess that maybe the implication is maybe your hive can stay warmer down below if you put a hot box on top. I don't know. But the idea of a hot box and the quilt box are essentially the same. It's the idea of a box filled with some type of absorbing material like wood chips or absorbing boards, something like that, cloth, and it usually has a screen on it. And so the moisture of your hive, let's, let's just think about that. The moisture rises up and it gets caught or trapped in this box of absorbing material. And the moisture, the liquid, the water is trapped there. And so it usually has little holes on the front or the sides of it. And the implication again is that the air would blow through that box and it would allow it to actually be uh, dispersed out into the ambient air around the hive. Now, the problem I had with all of the years that I spent playing with this type of design was that oftentimes here in Illinois, where I live, I would get rainy cold days sometimes in the wintertime. It might be 35, 38 degrees and raining, 
and all of that water would somehow find its way onto the material because some of that material is just either slightly exposed below the top cover or those holes allow rainwater to get in. So I was having a problem with a lot of moisture getting trapped, excess moisture being brought in from the outside, getting trapped in my quilt boxes and my hot boxes. And that just didn't work for me at all. And I, I really struggled with that. So that's when I decided that I needed to find a better way to absorb moisture in a colony. Because boy, I tell you, if you don't have something in there to absorb moisture, you're really gonna be frustrated with those moldy combs, with that excess moisture that's dripping down cold water on your bees in the winter time. It just happens time after time, year after year. And that's when I decided after a lot of careful reading of old literature on candy boards, is that I could design a candy board and mix it just right so that the excess moisture in a colony that the bees were producing just from their natural heat and the contrasting temperatures of the outside would be absorbed in the candy, making it more edible to the bees. And so that's why I invented my winter bee kind. My winter bee kinds have a vent or an opening in them that allows ventilation to go out of the hive. Excess ventilation can bleed away uh, from the top of the hive. And I didn't intend for that to be a thing that the bees would use to fly in and out, but after I began using them to feed my bees in the wintertime, I noticed that bees were actually uh, taking cleansing flights, very cold temperatures, through the opening, through the vent opening in my candy board. So uh, let me explain it here on the marker board. When we have two deeps like this, the screen bottom board on a hive stand, we have a distance of six to eight inches here that I've talked about before. The reason I like to wrap my hive where I cover this bottom board is because when I put my winter bee kind on, I wanna force my bees to go in and out from the little slot in the winter bee kind. Because get this, when the dead bees fall down to the bottom board, whether it's solid or screen, they're gonna collect here and they're gonna just clog up the entrance. Now, I think a healthy colony is quite capable of cleaning out the dead bees, but get this. Let's say the temperature is about 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this is the temperature that bees will not fly unless it's really, really sunny, not very windy, so we have a lot of sun that's shining down onto the hive and kind of heating it up. At 34 and above, these bees will feel that heat and they may break cluster. But at that temperature, the cluster might be located inside the hive about right here, making up this area. When it gets warm enough, it's unlikely that the bees are gonna travel all the way down here and walk over their dead sisters to fly out. When they're so close to the top up here, and especially if you have the winter bee kind on here and then your top cover on there, the bees are likely to just pop out of this hole, take a cleansing flight and come back rather than have to walk all the way down to the bottom away from the cluster over their dead sisters and fly out. That's my reasoning. And again, I'm not saying this is the way you have to do it or should do it. It's the way I do it and it works pretty well for me. Now, if you have a better method and you like to use the solid bottom board and you just like to let your bees go in and out of there as they do, I think bees can handle that. They've done it for years. I've just noticed that I can get uh, bees coming out of here at around 34 degrees or higher, but down here, I'm gonna have to get a pretty darn warm day, sometimes into the 50s before they'll break cluster and travel that distance. Now, as I mentioned, I do sometimes wrap my colonies. There's a lot of different wraps that I have experimented with. I've used foam boards, I've used bath insulation. And when it all is said and done, I've noticed one thing about insulation or wrapping my hives in the wintertime. It is not as critical for me as a wind block is. Now, a lot of people ask me, you know, what's better? It, should I wrap my hives? Uh, what's the better material should I use to wrap my hives? A lot of times we're wanting to wrap our beehives like we insulate our homes, and that is gonna cause a problem. Hey, let's face it, we wrap our homes 
so well that sometimes we have moisture problems because we don't allow ventilation to go above the insulation. And so the same can be true with a colony. If you wrap it too much, then you're gonna have too much moisture that's being trapped. You need ventilation in the wintertime. This is crazy, isn't it? How do you figure all this out? The one thing that was torturing me when way back in the day when I was trying to experiment with wrapping my hives to help them in the winter was that on a warmer day when it got 30 or 40 degrees Fahrenheit in the wintertime and the sun would come out and it wouldn't be very windy, my bees would feel the warmth of that sun hitting their box and they could take a, a real short cleansing flight. But if I wrap my hive to wrap against cold wind uh, and cold air uh, hitting the side of the box, then when the sun came out on a warm day when it's above 35 degrees Fahrenheit and it's sunny, guess what happened? My insulation was preventing the sun from hitting my hive, telling the bees that it's warm enough to take a cleansing flight. It really did, it kind of backfired on me. So for a few years, guess what I did? I went out there on warmer days and I took off my insulation wraps and then wrapped them back up before nightfall. That became a pain in the butt. So I didn't want to do that anymore. And that's when the winter be kind was just solving my problems. Put candy board on top, let that be your moisture absorbent material that they're going to consume. They're, they're eating their own moisture as it gets absorbed in the winter be kind candy and they're able to eat that candy to stay healthy all winter long. So when it comes to wrapping, I'm not a big fan of wrapping. What I like is a windbreak. I wish I had a windbreak right here. It's windy today. But a windbreak is going to keep the wind from pounding against that hive and pulling their heat away, just like in your home. On windy days in your home, it can be, it doesn't have to be really cold, but on windy days in the wintertime, you'll, you'll hear your furnace run a lot more but on, a, but on a colder day, when the wind isn't blowing, your furnace runs less because the stronger the wind is, the more it will pull away heat from your home. And same way with the beehive. So some type of wind block is going to go a lot further, be a lot better for you, and it's going to allow your hive to still have that southern sun exposure on warmer winter days where, nat where normally a, a wrap would prevent that warmth from hitting the box. I was really motivated to pursue winter moisture by reading uh, Reverend Langstroth's book. Uh, Reverend Langstroth came up with our Langstroth hives that we most beekeepers use today. And in his book in late 1800s, he wrote a lot about moisture in the hive. And I was alarmed about the impact that moisture can have on honeybees during the winter time. And so I was motivated by much of his research and writing that he did to help get rid of that moisture out of the hive in the late 1800s. And so it's something today that we're still working on uh, to figure out how do we keep our hives from having so much excess moisture in the colony, uh, in the hive all winter long. So for me personally, I tell you, this is how it works for me. Wrapping, I could wrap them, but then I have to go out and take the wrap off on a warm sunny day. I'm not gonna do that. I will wrap them if I look at their forecast and it looks like it's just gonna be a torturous several days of maybe 20 below zero chill factor. I may go out and wrap them. But usually what I've done ahead of time is I provided a wind block. That could be a snow fence. That could be something in particular that I've assembled around my hives to just keep the wind from pounding against my boxes. Hey, here's a tip for you. Try not to use bale of straw or haze. Uh, don't put it directly against your hive. They draw a lot of moisture in on rainy days and they hold that moisture right against your hive. Your hive will then uh, absorb that ambient moisture. So if you're gonna use bales of hay or straw or something like that, make sure they're about three feet away from your hive, enough to let some of that moisture uh, evaporate away or out of the, the uh, bales of hay before it gets uh, drawn into your hive. This Thursday we have a live stream at 7 p.m. and if you're watching this video before that live stream, it's going to be a live stream about starting a beekeeping business. Yeah, that's right. It, a lot of you have asked me this question before and even if you're not starting a beekeeping business, it'd be a good live stream for you to ask questions because we have a tax expert, an accountant, to help you figure out whether you should go LLC, sole proprietor, how should you pay taxes or should you pay taxes 
on the money that you're making, selling your honey, making uh, uh, your business go with your, your bees. A lot of questions are going to be answered at this live stream with our friend Tom. That's going to be Thursday at 7 p.m. And here's the link right here. If you're still pretty confused by the whole overwintering thing, I made a class, an online beekeeping class, how to get your bees through the winter. It'd be a great time to get this class and look at it. It's online. It's videos of me teaching you just like right here. Here's a link to that uh, online course. I think it'd be a big help for you guys how to get your bees through the winter. Now, some of you have been wondering what you should be feeding your bees now to this fall, getting them ready for winter. I made a video on what you should feed your bees, my secret recipe, here it is right here. I'll see you guys over there.